welcome back, my trading warrior sister. Hello, how are you guys? Good, good to be back. Uh, we're good, Hello. and what a, what a great day to have you. Yeah, definitely. So uh, um, you don't share a screen, so I'll share mine, right? Yes, correct. Okay, and we just go through the, we'll cover the board together, Tracy. Appreciate you being here, so I'm going to share my screen. Why don't we start off with WTI, Trace? I'm taking a shot here. Um, I thought that uh, with the spoos up 54 handles, that so far um, the response in WTI has been kind of muted. What are you thinking here in the energy patch? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think we're looking a little bit stretched um, here and kind of, you know, as you said, the market reaction, you know, we haven't really. Um, gone up as much as the school has. And that's partly for fundamental reasons. Uh, refining margins are so poor right now that it's kind of keeping a cap really on, on WTI. I mean, if you've noticed, we've kind of been in that, you know, like 30. $3 range. Like, yeah, like that $3 range for a while, which is good actually, because, you know, I mean, OPEC, uh, OPEC basically wanted to stabilize the oil market. And, they kind of have, but um, just the was it o was it OPEC or the Fed, Trace? Let's uh, stabilize the. <laughs> <laughs> I, I pick one. I don't know. All right. Um, maybe. But both. yeah, so I mean, right now, I think what you know, I think we're just in consolidation mode. I don't see foresee anything really right now that's going to cause you know a major spike in 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 oil prices. Um, you know, looking out to the future, I do see because of all the CapEx cuts, and this is kind of more of on a macro level, you know, because of all the CapEx cuts um, and consolidations and bankruptcies, you know, I definitely think we see an inflationary uh, oil spike, but that's not out until 2021. Um, in the meantime, I think, you know, right now, really, we're just in consolidation zone, and I don't really see... Uh, big catalyst for any kind of big move up to the upside right right now as, as it stands right now. You know, I kind of have a, a level I'm eyeballing down around the 30 to $28 level, um, you know, based upon the kind of rally that we had in the first bounce before we went negative. Uh, is that um, a little aggressive for a narrative yeah. to maybe see a $10 break in gold in oil? <laughs> Um, I mean, per, just because of everything so bullied right now by the Fed and everything that it's possible. I mean, I thought we would see a bigger pullback already, but, yeah. you know, we'll possibly see that heading into um, heading into the fall where it's typically um, a softer market anyway for okay. uh, the oil industry. But, you know, I definitely can see, you know, 30, 35 is definitely possible. Okay. Uh, appreciate that view and uh, anything fundamentally um, China wise, uh, uh, China's uh, their equity markets exploding. So, uh, yeah, I guess apparently, yeah. apparently, Nomura put out a, a, a note yesterday, I guess, during their whatever that basically said, um, get out of US equities and get into Chinese equities because of uh, the unrest and the virus and everything in um, it going on in the US. So I guess they're yeah. flipping all their customers over to Chinese stocks. Yeah, US becoming a pariah makes your move to uh, Canada look prescient. So uh, I wish I was up there with you and I saw that beautiful picture. Yeah, just keep a room open for me, okay? And you got uh, it. all right. And uh, you know, I want to congratulate you. Uh, I want to go to the dollar index now. And uh, you know, uh, what's great about Twitter is you really make uh, you have some great relationships. And when people see you commenting on something, they actually provide input. And you did down here, Trace. If you see my screen. Uh, you were talking about 96 and then 95.60, and uh, that was a great call. That was a low of the dollar. I know that your uh, dollar bull, or at least a euro bear, uh, this right. action today, does it, uh, what's going to flip you from being a euro bear to a euro bull? Do you need 114 or, 
what are you thinking here? I mean, it's not really a technical level. I'm actually looking at more fundamental levels, you know, and something to keep an eye on is, you know, the, I guess, it's what, the 17th and 18th, they have their meeting on, um, the EU has their meeting on, you know, on, on this stimulus bill, um, you know, that's something I'm watching. Obviously, if that passes and it, and it looks good, that will be bullish for the euro. But if it doesn't, that's pretty bearish. Um, but my view on that is more macro view. So, you know, uh, you know, this pullback in the dollar does not change my, my views at this point. Okay. All right. So uh, kind of uh, uh, do you, when you have a fundamental view, uh, do you have levels uh, that you might be interested in building a short position in Euro then, or you're just going to wait for the meeting, see what the ECB does? Oh, yeah, I'm just going to wait for, for, for the meeting. And actually, I haven't actually, I've actually been, uh, been in dollar index futures. Okay. EXF. Um, I haven't really been in the Euro lately, although, I, I mean, I switched back and forth, but lately I've just been okay. in uh, dollar futures. Okay. So I, I was kind of thinking, I don't know about you, but you know, uh, the weak dollar has been constructive or at least uh, for risk. And, um, you know, now that I'm looking at S and P's up here, I don't know if you want to comment on it, but uh, you know, we all know what the NASDAQ did, right? It's been a moonshot. It's parabolic. It's at new highs, but it took all of that strength in, um, NASDAQ for us finally to take out the high, the June 20th high in s and P's. I'm wondering right. uh, if you're just uh, as amazed as a lot of people who thought after the COVID crash that we'd have fib retracements and then pull back and, you know, we're not that far away from um, the recent recovery high of 3220. Any view on right. what's happening I mean, in the equity market? I mean, I think it's, I think NASDAQ is crazy. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I mean, okay. really, and, but it's, you know, it's all of about, about six, six stocks that are keeping it, uh, you know, at a slingshot, yeah. which is, you know, just because their market cap is so big and because they're weighted so heavily in, in, like in that this? index. Like Amazon, uh, you know, everyone right. buying things online, Amazon making new highs. Um, you know, Google, Microsoft, yeah. right. Apple. Right. You know, Apple has uh, kind of shifted from being the strongest technically to being the weakest technically. Just something I'm seeing with uh, new highs, if we make new highs that we're not confirming on a lot of time frames. But so uh, basically it's a stand aside for you. Uh, do you have a view on, on equities uh, similar to I mean, well, I, crude? Maybe it waits till the fall to br correct. Yeah, I think maybe closer to the election, election fears, you know, yeah. that come in. Yeah. And if, if you kind of look at um, the VIX curve, you'll kind of see a kink in November. So I think that, uh, you know, I think that's going to be kind of a contentious time for for volatility and for, for stocks as kind of we get closer to um, closer to the election. What are people thinking up there across the border uh, about U.S. elections? Uh, what's a talk of possible? I, I mean, the polls are favoring Biden, but who knows? Uh, I mean, you know, I think everybody here just stands back and just watches. They, you are know, you guys I mean, amazed at how uh, the U.S. has mismanaged uh, the COVID uh, problem here? Because you guys up in Canada have it pretty much... Uh, well contained compared to us, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Quebec was the hardest hit, but nothing close to. You Do you know. guys are you guys wearing masks up there? Um, actually, we don't. It's not mandatory. No, most people don't. Okay. Here. Yeah. So, and uh, can U.S. citizens are we barred from your country like we are from uh, Europe and other places? Yes, the border is closed so okay, far. Okay. Well, I have to cancel our date then, Friday. <laughs> I can't get there, Tracy. It's not my fault. It's yours. It's true. The border, huh? They just extended the border close down till the end of July. So we'll see how that goes. Oh, okay. Well, we'll have to reschedule. God, I was so looking forward to it. And uh, I want to, I, I know, are, are you looking at crypto? Do you pay attention to crypto at all, Trace? I really don't. I'm, That's okay. I 
that. I feel like yeah. if I'm, I, yeah, everybody is. I'm late to the game. I probably should look into it more. I just, I haven't. Any had. view on your? Yeah, I know. You know, I I can trade it because a chart is a chart. But when I try and understand blockchain, I'm a blockhead. So you know, I really it's hard for me to own anything that. I really don't understand. Uh, right. You have a view on you have a view on your local currency, uh, Canada, with what's happening in energy. Does it still look negative to you? So, US yeah, I mean, I think I mean, I, obviously, you know, um, oil, you know, up at forty, still is you know helping keep a bid on uh, CAD. Same with gold, gold, right? Because it's kind of yeah. a commodity currency. We have a lot of mining here. Um, right. So that currently is helping keep a bid and, and you know, a little bit of dollar weakness. Um, but in bigger picture, you know, if things don't change fundamentally, I think that will still present uh, weakness for CAD. And gold, um, uh, you know, some Elliotitians are saying that we're entering a ending diagonal, which, you know, the key word in here is ending. Do you think that the precious metal trade is too crowded um, that uh, you know, could be vulnerable, especially uh, since you are looking for a stronger dollar down the line. Do you think a stronger dollar is going to cap uh, this precious metal advance? Do you think that would be the catalyst? You know, I don't think that's necessarily true. I mean, only because of all the – certainty right now so even you have you know indices bid and even when we had you know even when dollar was you know just had that recent leg up to what 97 8 um, yeah. or whatever it was i mean gold stayed pretty well bid because i think right now it's a yeah. you know flight to safety trade it's a totally different kind of trade you have so much uncertainty in the world right now that yeah. i don't think it's being as affected um you know I don't think it's having the same correlation that they used to have, right? You know, you know, something I've noticed, I'm sure you have too, is that the market has become so binary. Here's S&Ps, up. Here's oil, up. Here's gold, up. Uh. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's almost like uh, everything is going up together. The only difference is magnitude. Have you ever right. seen a market where there's so little differentiation between different asset classes that they're all uh, no, inflating or deflating together? <laughs> no, it's crazy. And it's, you know, and I think par partially because of, you know, what the Fed is doing because of so much liquidity that's slushing around and literally everything's good. <laughs> I mean, okay. Yeah, um, no. You know, China, uh, Nomura came out and said, buy China today. Right. And, uh, I, you know, I'm always interested in how people from other countries view what we're doing. And the rhetoric around China has been pretty intense coming from the U.S., uh, you know, with the Hong Kong, new law in uh, Hong Kong, and even before that, with uh, sanctions putting being put on people and uh, guys like Peter Navarro saying that, uh, COVID was weaponized and uh, China sent agents in here to infect Americans. Uh, if there's anything that I worry about on the election is where we're headed from with China. I mean, we've been in a cold war, um, but it seems like I hear, I hear drum beats that uh, worry me. Uh, what, what are people saying about uh, uh, the U S and China and is Canada drifting the same way that a lot yeah, I, of the U.S. old allies are drifting more towards alliance and connections with China than with the U.S.? Well, China has its own problems with Canada and vice versa, right? We've got Meng, Hawaii, right? Yeah, She's yeah. We're about right. to extradite her. Um, they've got okay. two of our two of Canada's journalists locked up. Um, you know, now they just both issued travel warnings against their countries. You know, China's kind of, to me, it's very strange because China's lashing out everywhere right now to everybody, Australia, Canada, um, some, not, not the U.S. so much, uh, you know, believe it or not, but um, which is kind of 
on and they're they you know they have 22 land disputes going on with 22 different countries it seems yeah. right now that they're lashing out at, at a bunch of countries which seems um uncharacteristic of them right they usually play the long game they're slow moving they don't you know usually react too quickly so this is i think we're kind of seeing uh, kind of a change here um you know within china and how how they're reacting to situations and where that leads i i'm not sure you know i've heard there's dissent within the party i've heard you know i've heard a lot of things about it but you know it's just something to keep an eye on because it, it's definitely uncharacteristic of that country okay interesting that it is and uh yeah i didn't know about the situations with journalists from your country also being uh jailed by them uh was there anything else that you and i didn't touch upon asset class flies that you would like to comment on Oh, no, I mean, I guess, you know, we can talk about grains here. If you look okay, at yeah. uh, okay. soybeans so. are, are surging this morning. I, I don't know, like, the, the we're supposed to have a, you know, 100 degree plus weather in the plains for the next two weeks, right after we just had floods all during the spring. So that's maybe, you know something to watch or you know perhaps a trade idea um in yeah you the, can't eat gold in the, com- in the grain complex and soybeans are called uh protein uh, go- uh protein gold so uh you know the color there of it and so so uh yeah uh you know that would uh, kind of line up with everything that's going on uh you know pandemic uh famine next uh, some type right, of grain right, why not <laughs> yeah, because, you know, China's having trouble with their crop and their wheat crop. They have right. some type of army worm or something. So, and, and I, you know, it's great you brought up the grains. They're very good technical markets. Uh, I used to trade them a lot. Uh, do you trade them? Um, occasionally, yes. I okay. usually trade the, the coin, corn market if I'm going to trade any grain. Okay. All right. So, uh Grains look good to Tracy, and, uh, you know, we could have some type of uh, pullback, and you maintain your bullish stance on the dollar, but you yeah. really don't have any levels. You're going to wait for the ECB me- meeting mid-month to make any decisions on that. Right, exactly. I mean, right now, I'm just saying, I mean, it's, you know, right now, I'm just, I'm actually not in any currency market at, at the current time. I'm Kind of you know, and out. as we talk, uh, my crude position's working. You see, you brought me some good luck today. To me, it there looks like, Trace, uh, we have kind of a rising wedge here. Mm-hmm. And uh, the rule on wedges is, you know, I think we could fail, especially if we get any risk off in the market, to back to these levels. Don't you think 34 is realistic, the bottom of yeah, the Yeah, I mean, really, um, I think really right now, um, the 30s, sevens where it's going to get sticky but if we get below that then that's right here um, yeah then you know definitely so i'd watch that 37 area if we can get uh below that then i definitely think we could you know continue on into um, the lower 30s okay and uh, i'm going to pull up uh, your website shygirl.com it kind of looks like a little bit of a blog spot and yeah. you do some writing here Okay, Occasionally, that, I, I haven't yeah. kept it up, so you know. Okay, you're too busy on Twitter and trading, <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, okay. I haven't, you know, I don't know, I, I haven't kept it up. I usually do if like something, you know, big happens, but. Okay, all right, well, uh, get to it. We need you out there. There's so all much right, uh, right. baloney out there uh, that, you know, we need an educated eye, especially in these times, and I want to thank you for being with us today, Tracy, I recommend that everyone becomes a follower of yours, and it's at shy, G R L, and you could follow Tracy on Twitter, and uh, she covers a gamut. Uh, you you know you're commenting on things. Uh, I really enjoy your feed, and appreciate you and uh, you coming here, and thank you for letting me pick your brain and edify our community today, Tracy. Absolutely. It's always a pleasure. All I right. love, love talking to you guys. Good good hunting, Trace. All right. And, thanks. Uh, I, we'll get something going in the fall, all right? Perfect. All right. Everyone, Tracy Schubert, and uh, you could follow her at Shy Girl on Twitter. And that's going to be a wrap for us, everyone. Uh, we'll see you all back tomorrow. 
for uh, Turnaround Tuesday. And I wanna thank everyone for being with us. Remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. And let me just look for the place to end the meeting. <laughs> All right, so that's gonna be a wrap. Pause recording. Okay, everyone, have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow for Turnaround Tuesday.